and I will report a bit on um, how I um, followed the idea um, of uh, having a um, printed resource, so somehow similar to what John told you, um, and how to convert this into a digital resource and what this could mean, how this could help us to work with it further on. The vocabulary is uh, the outcome of um, a group uh, organized by the Comité International de la Diplomatique. They established a Comité International de la Cigographie um, in the context of the general uh, uh, historical uh, society, international societies. And they, well, the idea started in the 50s, if I'm correctly informed, and um, uh, Henri Bautier, Robert uh, Henri Bautier, um, then pushed it forwards, uh, forward in the 70s and 80s, um, and uh, somehow parallel to the other vocabulary um, activities in his context. And they finally published a printed volume in 1990, 90, in which they um, present a list of definitions of terms um, used in phrygistics and together with translations into, I don't remember precisely how many languages, it's about 15 or something, um, starting with the most expected like Fran Fr uh, French, the definitions are in French at, uh, anyway, and English and German, Spanish, Italian, Dutch, North, North Swedish, um, uh, Russian, and now I have certainly Portuguese uh, missed the majority. I think they were Czech and Polish as well. Um, so um, these um, collection of um, definitions and um, term translations um, are useful for everybody who wants to look up a specific term, thinking about, okay, what is the tupar? Please tell me. I know I have read it in a paper and want to know what, what it is. And so I can look it up and get a definition. And I get even, which is uh, uh, probably one of the reasons why many of us have used it when they try to translate their uh, publications into a foreign language to check what is the term, the correct term for this. Um, from a technological perspective, it's um, something slightly different, um, not too different, um, but there are consequences by, um, from this, uh, which convert this list of terms and explanations into something the um, World Wide Web Consortium has, is calling a simple knowledge organization system. So it's a knowledge resource. Um, that is by establishing there is a concept, defining it, by establishing labels and establishing the relationship between the concepts and the labels on a level that the um, label, there could be multiple labels to the same concept. And that's not only by multilingual, that could be even in one language. Um, the, there are identifiers because every, uh, concept, every term has a number in the uh, vocabulary, um, and they are organized somehow hierarchical. So there are chapters and subchapters, and some of the terms have some subterms, or there's an A and a B, and stuff like this. Um, these, all these concepts are um, a very well established method um, in knowledge organization already before. Uh, digital uh, uh, technology came around, um, where in library catalogs, you thought about, okay, if I want to have a keyword, I need a standard keyword, um, which is uh, my preferred entry point. Um, but I know there are alternative keywords um, and I uh, want to have pointers from them to the main keyword. Um, the uh, library systems, uh, uh, um, uh, Health marks are a very well established method to identify something which is, well, does not have a, a, a label, a name, maybe. Um, and these knowledge resources usually have kind of pointers around saying, okay, this is similar to another one, and this is even the same, or this is slightly the same, not really the same. Um, or, and this is a broader term or narrower term. Um, by the way, the broader, narrower is a concept which is highly 
useful, very, very often used. And you have seen in Marco's presentation, uh, these boxes, and these boxes are somehow similar. They say, okay, um, there are lots of zeros, and they uh, share um, a common denominator. Um, and maybe you could put, put, could put, put even uh, some of these boxes together in other boxes. You see, so there in this corner, there are all the boxes with the seals from the Southern um, uh, Britain. And over there in the other corner, there are the seals from, uh, from Scotland, et cetera, et cetera. So hierarchy uh, is a very useful concept, although hierarchy has so many implications that it's a bit risky sometimes to use. Anyway, it's well established. And this simple knowledge organization system uh, proposed by the um, WCC is a vocabulary um, to describe these kinds of resources. And they're doing it in the technology called a resource description framework. I don't know if anybody else has already introduced it to you. I assume if not, it's not that problematic. Um, the nice thing about the resource description framework about the RD, about RDF is that the code in which it is described usually is um, almost readable because it mimics sentences. So it has a subject and a predicate and an object position. Um, and so you can sometimes even uh, read it aloud. Um, these um, uh, code I have put here um, in blue is code used in the predicate position. So you're telling about a concept, vocabulary international de la sigilographie one, um, has a preferred label in French that is sigilographie and not sphagistique, uh, which would be an alternative label. Um, you can add, and that's precisely what's happening in the vocabulary, uh, definitions and descriptions uh, uh, how far the, uh, this concept is um, uh, is ranging. Um, SCOS is by this and technology technology to represent stuff. Um, we are conceptualizing particular for uh, keywords and stuff like this. Um, and to which as having a formal language, you can create tools. Uh, SCOSMOS is a tool in which you can search and browse in these kind of um, uh, terminologies. Uh, SCOSPLAY is something where you get some um, individual uh, representations. Um, uh, that two of the many possible applications. Um, um, I think but these two are those which comes most easy to, to uh, play around with. Um, there are lots of uh, resources um, in cultural heritage described with the help of SCOS, uh, probably the most famous because the most rich and most thought through is the Getty Arts and uh, Architecture Thesaurus, um, which has a rich hierarchy and a rich field and I assume lots of terms we could use in uh, um, um, Sphagistics are there, so describing the images on the seals, etc. The seals themselves, icon class is maybe for the art historians, a well-known resource which has its critique uh, critics, um, but there is this course a representation of it as well. Uh, the fish vocabularies uh, might be better known in uh, Great Britain because they are um, from the culture that the uh, um, cultural heritage. Um, uh, resources in, in Great Britain, um, and um, they uh, suggest uh, keywords and stuff to describe. Um, so it seems natural, and it is natural, I would say, to translate this printed book into this kind of source resource. Um, Philippa already introduced me and made my interest in charters, um, and that's where I started to make this attempt. Um, by the way, I, it was triggered by a conference uh, where I had the advantage to have an uh, interpreter, but this interpreter asked me for a terminology list because when, if lots of diplomatists talk to, get, uh, to each other, they're coming up uh, specific terms, certainly. So I took the vocabulaire international de, de la diplomatique, uh, did an OCR, uh, did some cleanup. Um, and created a database for this interpreter out of it. Later on, I realized this database is not just a help for translations, but it's helping for knowledge organization in itself um, and converted this into a SCOS resource. So uh, it was, uh, well, 
came, came easy to me that I should do the same with Vocabulaire International de la Géographie. So I created um, OCR of the PDF, um, which is bad with all the Slavic uh, languages, unfortunately, because the OCR software, I used the standard OCR software, um, Abby Fine Reader had not no good um, support for these kind of languages. Um, and the French descriptions were not that good because, uh, well, it didn't recognize everything as being French. Um, that would probably be better these days. Uh, I could use some, it was good enough that I could use some regular expressions, so some, some programming uh, search and replace activities um, um, by which I could identify the start of an entry because something, they all start with numbers. Uh, I could uh, identify the parts where, where the main entry points in French were put in bold. Um, there are the language codes in the list below the, um, the entry, so I could reuse them, just and translate them into a dedicated code and find all the, the deviations um, to enhance them. Um, and I could even find some of these multiple translations because they in, um, uh, uh, end with a semicolon and start with a small letter A to Z. Um, and by this, um, uh, well, I created something automatically, automatically and then I had fortunately a student um, to go through it and add all the headings from the uh, text and clean up the um, parts, uh, the, some of the languages, um, uh, the uh, terms, and then converted out of it this kind of XML. Uh, XML is a nice technology because it um, uh, is close to the text, so it's easy to uh, send, uh, add it to the text. You see that there are still some things which are easy to recognize are not yet encoded, or the references between the terms, the matrice and and stuff like this. Uh, but everything else is there. <clears throat> the headings, the number, um, the term, the main term, um, uh, etc. Um, and this is from this I can use some trans, uh, conversion language XSLT, um, which extracts um, some languages the translations. Uh, I use those because they were the best uh, with the automatic recognition, and my student was able to control them, which is not the case with the uh, Cyrillic stuff and uh, use the hierarchical organization in the table of contents. Um, and um, convert this into an XML file and publish this. I published, did not publish the definitions. Uh, that's by my, um, well, an intellectual copyright concern. Um, I'm still trying to get in contact with the, um, with the archival direction uh, directorate in uh, Rome um, to talk about them uh, with them about um, granting rights with the vocabulary international de la diplomatique it was much easier the uh, committee was fast in responding and very happy I hope that the uh, cylogographers in Rome and the community um, will allow me as uh, soon to publish the definitions as well. So I extracted only the terms and uh, converted it into a resource, uh, which I should have created a um, screenshot, although it's not really, um, well, much to see on it. Uh, we'll briefly share my screen, change my screen to share. Um, and you will probably be uh, have it much easier to to see this uh, because it's nothing else than the list um, with all the terms. Uh, you can change the main language, um, which does not change with the ter uh, main terms because they are only in French there. Um, but then you have here sigillography instead of sigillography um, and the art of the seal instead of art du so. Um, it usually displays what your browser language is, so you might have seen it uh, already in your language anyway. Um, you don't see much else, which is 
well, telling you maybe why should I bother? Um, the most important thing is this one, because this URL is unique in the internet. It has to be by being an URL. So you could use this URL to reference all the information which is behind this um, here, this resource, um, and it did, uh, explaining, uh, declaring to all users that your term is precisely, has precisely the meaning of seal, um, seal metrics um, in the definition of the vocabulary. The data in behind looks like this, um, which is only important for people who are involved in um, programming with RDF. Uh, again, important is here, that's the identifier. We have some references, sorry, uh, to other identifiers um, over here, narrow and broader, um, that should not bother us. I promise you, and I will finish with some uh, images. And I keep my promise. Um, because I used, we used at the Center in Graz, we used this vocab uh, vocabulary to, um, be, to um, annotate a SEAL database created in a research project on the seals of the archbishops bishops of uh, Salzburg and the bishops in the um, dioceses, archdioceses of um, Salzburg, um, in which um, they look like standard description. I have uh, here on the right side um, created a screenshot of all the data which is available for each of the seals, which is very, very much. So you cannot read anything. Um, and we coded it in a standard exchange format. Um, to, that should allow that this data we created is not only available in our on our website, but you could just download it and copy it into a database uh, you want um, to use. Um, we used a standard for description of um, of uh, museum objects called Lido, the lightweight um, information describing object standard, um, in which. There, which is a standard which does not reference seals or does not describe seals in particular, but any kind of museum objects. So we were very happy that we could create descriptors dedicated to seal descriptions that um, are still part of this generic um, description set, telling that this description now is concerning the, um, the owner of the seal. Or the other one, it's telling us it's a seal with a seated figure, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's one of the purposes um, by which the resource is uh, it much, much better interchangeable and by which the resource should be searchable, even multilingual. Um, it doesn't, it's not the case by several reasons that partially depend on the single project, but um, the, the potential is there. And the potential is not only with our database there, but I've seen lots of data and have uh, yesterday even heard a discussion on how, how international is your a Czech um, uh, SEAL database. And um, Martina was very hard in, in trying to convince everybody that we would love to be um, completely international. Um, but it's work. Um, with the vocabulary, you could uh, uh, start with, okay, we have the check term, we reference the check term to the, um, to the uh, vocabulary, um, and um, would then have um, an international version of our database. Um, we would, I would like to add, certainly I started already the definitions. Um, I would like to have all the internal references and I would certainly like to have um, all the new definitions the colleagues from uh, Czechia, uh, Czech Republic and uh, Slovakia and Hungary, um, Poland created um, some years ago. Um, uh, maybe even uh, use this resource to amend and extend the, um, 
the uh, current existing definitions, um, but certainly it should become, um, I hope, a reference for everybody who is uh, trying to use um, uh, vocabulary, a seal related vocabulary in a digital environment um, and um, wants to make a multilingual search uh, easier and want to make exchange of your description easier. Um, so that's what I'm hoping for. And I do hope that will happen a bit with all of you in this event. Thank you.